G'day guys, today we're taking a closer look at my MDC XT17 solar setup. Now we've got 875 watts of solar and 400 amp hour of battery capacity and I was expecting to get a lot more out of that but in reality we're, the performance has been pretty disappointing. We're only getting two to three days with minimal use of, of the inverter and really even 12 volt appliances. Uh, so yeah, taking a deep dive into that at the moment. Pull out the solar panels, I've checked those all individually, check the voltage and the current while charging. They're all putting current into the system relatively equal under the same conditions. So that just leaves the charge controller as a likely culprit. So after doing a bit of research, I found that uh, quite a few other MDC owners have changed out the projector charge controller for a Victron unit. Uh, so I've purchased one of those and we're here today to put that on and do a bit of a comparison between the two, see if we get that performance we're looking for. Stick around and see how we go. All right, so we've got the Victron MPPT 150 Smart Solar Charge Controller. Twelve to twenty-four volt auto detection, uh, fifty amp maximum output current. This is the unit itself. It's a IP forty-three. Got the battery termination and the solar termination there. And got the V direct connection. So just for this video today, I just want to put in a temporary connection. I just want to get some readings for the existing solar controller change it over this one see what it's like go back to the other one and, and just compare the results because yeah I haven't been too happy with how the projector units performing so yeah I'll just make up some temporary leads to wire into here and just sit it in there so I can quickly change over just on the fuse terminals and get some readings compare the two charging units this is the setup on the MDC XT17 HRT family this is like a in between I think they've got the mark 3 now I don't know that they have had a mark two but this is in between where we've got the battery box inside the van but we didn't get like the timber bench tops and stuff like that so we've got the two dc dc chargers going to drop off the solar connection compare the controller based on that um, you can see there's quite a size difference i mean this is a 50 amp controller and this is a 25 amp controller so yeah just gonna sit this in here put some leads down to the fuse and into the the battery sorry the battery's here but then the negative pick up the negative over here somewhere leave it in situ and just not mount this for now and just yeah compare it All right, so it's got some temporary leads made up. So I'll just put these in here. All right, so that's it, just with some temporary leads made up, we'll get some current readings and swap it over. It's a little windy, so hopefully this audio is not too bad. Um, I'm just currently trying to run the battery down on the van at the moment, so when we change over to the other controller, we're not sort of seeing it clip because the charge is too high, so I'll get the values for the charge currents for the projector once this has run down. Yes, yeah, so at the moment we're sitting at 88% battery, so I'll run that down a little bit and um, see how we go. All right, so just doing a couple of checks, see how, how it's wired, where the solar panels come in to the DC-DC charger, where the DC-DC charger feeds back into the system. So fan bank of three solar panels here. So it's one, two, three. They come and back up through another fuse and then back into the DC-DC charger on that green wire there. What I also found is that the 
the negative connection for the five solar panels, they all come back through into one lug. Not a huge fan of that, but um, even more so, not a huge fan that the, the lug is actually loose. So you can see there's witness marks on all the other terminations and the, for whatever reason, the solar panels missed out and they didn't get tightened up. So that could be contributing to why we're having issues with the solar performance, but we'll see. I'll, I'll tighten that up and see how that affects the charge current, if at all. Uh, may or may not, it's probably still getting a connection through there. It's just a potential hot joint. Uh, yeah, not, not good to have that. So battery percentage is 81%. Um, tightening that connection had little to no effect on the charging current. Um, it's just a potential like reliability issue with a hot joint in the future. Um, charging current at the moment is eight and a half amps, best I've seen. Um, panels are partially shaded at the moment. Um, so that's fluctuating between eight and a half, five, and sometimes one amp, I guess, depending on how the trees are blowing around, which is inconsistent for the tests, unfortunately. We'll change over and see what we get though with the, the other unit. All right, so this is, this is with the Victron controller connected at 89% uh, battery with 24 amps of charging current and full, full sun on the panels there. It is early in the morning though, around 9, 9.30. Now this is with the projector connected. We've still got the same, that's the percentage. 89%, so we've got 89% battery charging current of only 1.6 there. I did just see it at eight. Um, same conditions, wouldn't be three or four minutes later. It's actually consuming 1.6. I'm a little bit confused how that can be the case. All right, so it's woken up now, it's charging. We've got 22.5. So it's projector system, still 89% battery. I just went over to the unit and it wasn't charging. Um, then I heard it make a noise and then it, the charging light switched on. Um, so we're getting 22.5 there. And we've got morning sun on the panels. All right, just back on the Victron. 89% um, charge. We're not, again, less than five minutes from the last one, 25.4. Um, 5.2 amps from the Victron. Uh, again, sun, like early morning sun on the panel, so not directly above. Um, yeah, there we have it. So th this video I'm filming now is actually post a trip. So um, with the new Victron unit on there, we were able to run the air conditioner during the day uh, and we are getting 47 to 50 amps of charge current back into the system. So yeah, I would run it for quite a few hours, giving us the confidence to, um, you know, that'll charge back up the next day anyway. Yeah, so one other thing I'm not too happy with on this um, installation as well is the, the bends on the cable. So this is like a 90 degree bend here. There's another one here, another one here, another one down on the, the negative terminal there. Uh, and also these ones down here bending back. Um, yeah, your cable typically has a minimum bending radius, which is somewhere in the order of eight to 12 times the diameter of the cable. So you should have nice sweeps here. This this is really stressing out the cable and it's right on the lug too. So, all right, so this is it, how it is now. I've just got the charger down the, I've just got the charger down the bottom here. Not the best for the heat sink. Um, until I sort out another DC-DC charger or what I'm going to do here, because at the moment these both take the alternator um, input or the Anderson on the front of the caravan to charge the battery. I've only using one at the moment, so I'm actually down on charging current from the Anderson, um, just until I get another circuit breaker so I can put those in. The connections that I'm not using so they're the old solar inputs. I've just put some heat shrink over the end to insulate those now as well. Um, I won't leave like that in the long run.